Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to uh, the, I guess, officially Biology for Life uh, special topics um, micro course. Um, the uh, the topic for this course, the title that I've given it for this uh, section, is um, uh, is pleasure, addiction, attention, and obsession. Um, so in this class, we're going to be discussing neurobiology. It's a biology class. Um, we're going to be talking about um, how the biology of the brain works, in particular areas in the brain that are involved in feeling of pleasure, um, and how that can be, um, uh, how chemicals, but also other, uh, other things like social media that's in this picture here, um, can take advantage of these brain areas that are involved in natural feelings of pleasure and enjoyment, um, to um, get people addicted to um, to various uh, things, whether it's uh, a substance or a behavior or something like that. Um, also, how we pay attention, and then um, uh, obsessions um, and various diseases. So, in, addic in addition to addiction, the other two diseases that we're going to be talking about in this are. Um, ADHD or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder and OCD or obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, in this class, my big overall goal, in addition to teaching you, of course, about these diseases, is to teach you how neuroscientists research these diseases in particular, and more generally, how biology and neurobiology research is done. Um, we are not going to be getting into the methodological details in a lot of sort of real nitty gritty detail senses, but really trying to just understand um, how um, can biologists manipulate systems, whether it's changing the genetics of a mouse um, or um, teaching a mouse a particular behavior or exposing a mouse to a particular medication um, or um, investigating differences in the brain between individuals with the disease versus individuals without a disease um, but uh, or, or recording activity in a brain. How can um, um, biologists manipulate systems? How can biologists measure what goes on in brains? Um, and then from those measurements, what kind of results do we get? And then how do we go from those results to an understanding of the biology that's going on? Um, and so there's a lot of different uh, sort of detailed um, objectives here. Um, about understanding the genetic and environmental components of a disease, um, understanding how cells, individual neurons, and how the connections between those neurons um, interact, uh, uh, change in diseases or different in diseases, um, how to evaluate treatments, understand and evaluate treatments, and then thinking about how scientific investigation is ongoing now, and what are some open questions that we don't have answers to. Um, this class is part of uh, CMU Cutter's um, micro course system, um, which means that our in-person time is really limited to about a week. Um, it's really just um, five class periods, one long class period on Saturday, February 8th, um, and then some shorter evening classes, um, Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, and the following Monday. Um, we're also going to have a couple of Skype sessions, um, uh, and, um, uh, and then, um, other, and, and then, uh, everything else is going to be done, um, kind of remotely. Um, uh, there is... Even though our first meeting until February 8th, there's actually some work that you have to do coming up in the first uh, couple weeks of classes, just a little bit of work to kind of get you ready for the course. Um, 
there's, uh, you know, w- once I arrive on the ground in Doha, I'll have some more information about like the exact physical location and a phone number for my office, but my email address is on the syllabus. Um, Dr. Nazrina Farah, um, who's a biology faculty member, is also a contact person um, f- uh, if you have some questions. Um, and then there's also a course assistant who is not, um, uh, who's an undergraduate in computer science. They don't know about like course material. Um, but they do know how to help um, if you have issues with technical problems. Um, So um, in terms of the grading in the course, um, 30% of your grade is homework. Um, 15% of your grade is based on um, in-class activities and pre-class activities. We'll talk about those in a little bit. Um, There's an exam that's worth 35% of your grade and then a final written report that's worth 20% of your grade. Um, And then these are the grade cutoffs um, they're going to be potentially adjusted a little bit down. So sometimes an 89 might be an A, sometimes it might be like exactly a 90% to get an A. Um, for the exam, um, you should be there unless there's a, uh, a documented reason why you're not. Um, if there's something that you know in advance is going to interfere, let me know. If something comes up, uh, that day, let me know as soon as possible. But please, for the exam and for class attendance, you should always be prioritizing your personal health needs or if you have like personal family situations that arise, definitely take care of those situations first and then we'll take care of the class material later. Um, But unless there's some sort of um, personal emergency or health situation, um, I do expect that you are going to be coming to the class, especially because we really only have four or five class meetings, so they are very important. And that also means that you really do need to make sure to come to class, because um, if, you, if you're if you 20 minutes late to a class and we only have, I don't know, uh, however many minutes together, um, we, we won't, I think we only have 10 or 11 hours total together. Um, and so if you miss half an hour of that class period, um, that's a pretty substantial fraction fraction of the course that you've missed. Um, um, that's actually why I'm going through the syllabus now. <laughs> um, there's regrade policies here. Let me know if you have questions. Um, for um, uh, for be- Before every class period, there's going to be a short assignment due. I'll post that. Um, I'll post all of those um, uh, at least a day before they're due. Um, there are every class period, there are in-class activities as well. Um, for those, you're going to be uploading them to Gradescope. The pre-class assignment, everybody needs to do individually. The homeworks, you also use Gradescope. I'll show you Gradescope in just a bit. Um, the um, in-class activities um, are group assignments also on Gradescope. Um, and then, uh, the scientific, uh, publication report, um, there's more information about that, that, um, that I'll send, uh, that's not due until about a month or four weeks after all of our in-class sessions, three weeks, I guess, after all of our in-class sessions, it's due after the exam. So we'll talk about it, but I don't want to overwhelm you with everything like before I even show up. Um, There are also various other policies about late work, attendance, um, uh, uh, accommodations with disabilities, um, and uh, and, uh, links to cutter-specific policies and procedures. Um, Homeworks. The homeworks are submitted, uh, like I said, to Gradescope. The first homework assignment actually includes in it, let me open that up here, um, the first homework assignment, which which is not actually the first assignment, but the first homework assignment that's due on February 3rd, um, has a video embedded in it for um, watching, uh, for, for how to upload to Gradescope. Um, and then there are two other videos that actually present the biology content that you need in order to answer the homework questions. Um, The homework is not totally finalized, but will be up soon. Um, But you should definitely watch this. This video is just like two minutes long, and it tells you how to submit your homework. 
and how to use grade scope. So you definitely need that. And then these videos are like seven minutes each, and they're the, they are the content material you need in order to answer the questions on the homework. Um, a couple other things. You can bring a three inch by five inch um, piece of paper with um, handwritten notes for yourself on the exams. Um, if you miss the exam and so on, um, you should uh, let me know. Um, Please don't discuss the exam until a week after, just in case somebody did miss the exam and is make, taking a, re, a, a makeup. Um, uh, usually the makeups have diff, actually the makeup will have different questions, but it'll have some of the same concepts. And so just to avoid um, accidentally causing somebody else to be potentially in violation of honor code and both of you risk losing lowering grades, um, just don't talk about the exams until after I have released the grades. Once you get your grade back on your exam, then that means that everybody's taken it. Um, you should also be, for all of your classes, hopefully um, be aware of uh, university policies and recommendations for health and safety. Um, in this, uh, so, so, you know, like I mentioned a minute ago, um, your first priority should be your health and safety and the health and safety of your friends and family. Um, and when emergency situations arise, um, that is more important than my class. Um, you should, um, in this class, we are going to be talking about some potentially sensitive material involving neuropsychiatric diseases, including um, addiction, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder and Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. Um, this class is oriented toward the biology of these, and we're mostly talking about brain uh, changes and even um, uh, you know, ways that animals might exhibit similar behaviors and how we can use animals to learn about how these diseases function in humans. Um, but... Um, uh, for all of your classes, and I think in some ways this class in particular, um, you should be um, taking care of yourself and being attentive to your own health needs. Um, I've already made connections with some of the people in Cutter in counseling and uh, student health um, and, uh, and in student life, um, and I'm happy to help you connect to any of them if anything arises where you do need a little bit of extra support. Um, or their direct contact information is also um, here on the syllabus. Um, and, uh, and all of these resources are confidential. Um, and if you have questions about the confidentiality of that, you can uh, call them as well um, uh, or talk to or stop by and talk to them. Um, another thing that's unique about this course, these microcourse structures, um, we only have about a week together. Um, in person where I'm in, in Doha, but um, that's not that week is not the whole week of the course. The course runs from basically fills the first half of the semester. Um, from January 14th is when the first assignment is due, um, which is the third day of classes, um, all the way up until the last assignment, which is the written report that is due on March 2nd. Um, there are, this is a schedule um, with sort of a color-coded schedule. So yellow um, is um, the, uh, are the, are the canvas assignments, are, they, are, they, are assignment, or, or rather are individual assignments that are due, are the homework assignments. Um, the blue are um, times that I'm going to be meeting with uh, in times when you need to have your own computer or other device that you can connect to a Zoom meeting with. Talk about that in just a second. The green are the in-person class periods. Um, and uh, with the exception of these last two, which are times where you are all going to be together in the same room, but I am going to be um, connected remotely to that uh, room via Zoom. 
Um, those two times where you all together in the same room, but I'm connecting remotely are um, uh, Monday, February 24th and Wednesday, February 26th. Um, the February 24th is the is um, our last meeting and the purpose of that meeting is to review for the final for the exam for the course and then the 26th is the exam for the course. Um, <clears throat> for the individual meetings, um, those are, um, those are, uh, the, 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 there's, uh, the, there's a survey, actually, let me back up, sorry. The very first thing that's due is you need to do name coach over there on the left side on, um, on uh, Canvas. Um, and then also there's a survey on Canvas. Um, those are both due the first week of classes. The purpose of that is so I get to know each of you. And then um, the about two weeks before I arrive, I'm going to be scheduling individual Zoom meetings with each of you, one-on-one -on -one meet teleconferencing with each of you, because I want to have a little bit of time to get to know each of you before I come. Um, then there's a homework assignment due um, uh, via Gradescope and another assignment due via Canvas, um, both before I arrive. The Gradescope assignment is that homework one. The, it links from Canvas. Um, so if we go into Canvas and assignments, um, uh, um, Homework one is due February 3rd. Um, for that, you need to upload it to Gradescope, but you get the assignment off Canvas. And then um, the other things are on February 5th, you need to upload a news article about anything at all related to the course material, and then also an original research article. Um, there's some instructions in those for how to do that. The news article is, I hope, relatively straightforward. Um, any news source that is publicly accessible is fine, and it needs to be a news article that you find interesting um, about a topic related to the course. Um, and uh, I won't say I won't say who um, uploaded which article, but we will be discussing those new news articles on our Saturday session together, the first first in person uh, session with me in Doha. Um, also, you need to um, upload a research article. For that, what that means is it needs to be an article that is sci a scientific article that is um, uh, looking, presenting new research data. Um, in picking this, there's some information about picking this, but in picking this, you don't I'm not expecting that you actually understand everything in those articles when you upload them. Um, what I would recommend that you do is go to these recommended sites um, and type in whatever disease that you're interested in. Um, so, for example, um, uh, if my internet loads here, um, we can go to uh, the Journal of Neuroscience. Um, you should be able to access this through CMU libraries. Um, if you can't, you should talk to somebody in the library at Doha. Um, Journal of Neuroscience is being slow today, so we'll see if Cell is going to speed up for me. Um, all right, there we go. So, um, so, all right. So, so here is one of them. Um, I can search um, for, let's say, I'm interested in. Um, Obsessive Compulsive Disorder, or OCD. So I type search OCD, and then I read through. Um, this one, um, Puzzles and Prospects. Um, let me uh, open that up. Um, this one actually wouldn't be, would not apply, um, because it says right here that it's a review article. So that means it doesn't apply up here in the left corner, um, right above the title. It says review. It needs to be an original research article. Um, 
but um, and I'm guessing that this one, uh, a lot of the ones that have like questions in the name um, are review articles. I'm guessing this one like uh, is also a review. Um, but this one says article, so that's good. That's a that's an original research article. Um, you should read the title. And even if you don't understand every word in the title, if you're interested in just like, you know, what's going on with grooming in mice, that would be plenty of reason to choose this. Um, and then um, you can read, you should read just the first paragraph called the abstract. Again, if not everything makes sense, that's fine. Um, and then download a PDF, save that to your computer, and then upload that here on the Canvas assignment. Um, this one, again, is a review, wouldn't apply. Um, another way to know that something is not a review but is presenting original research is that it has a section called results. And somewhere, sometimes before the results, sometimes at the very end, it has another section called uh, materials and methods or experimental procedures. That's how you know that this is um, uh, an original research article which is appropriate for this assignment. Okay, so in any case, that's a few things to kind of be keeping track of even before we meet. Um, I will let you know, uh, I'll give you feedback about both of those assignments before we actually get together. Um, the homework requires you to read the syllabus and um, view the video about how to submit it to Gradescope and so on. Um, one other thing from the syllabus that I wanted to kind of, uh, a couple other things from the syllabus that I wanted to return to. Um, one of them is that after each class period, there, um, before and after each class period, these things are not on the calendar, but they are going to be there for every class period. So before every class period, there's going to be a short thing that you need to upload to Gradescope. It'll be posted in. I'll have the first one up um, uh, very soon. And then after each class, during each class period, I will ask you to discuss questions with a group. And then you need to scan those into a PDF file. There are apps that will do that off smartphones or scanners in the library that will generate PDFs. And then since you're doing that in a group, you will submit it to Gradescope and there are separate instructions for the in-class activities that are group activities for how to one person submits it and then you need to tag everybody else in your group. And there'll be some instructions posted on that. So the pre-class activities are individual, and it'll say on that 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 is the in-class activity is the only group assignment, and there you have you submit a single PDF. One person in the group submits a PDF of the notes from uh, from the discussion in class, and then they tag everybody else. Um, this is using a lot of different technology. If things come up with the technology, please let me know. Um, also, in addition to the one-on-one -on -one Zoom meetings, we have one other class meeting period where we're all going to be meeting at the same time, but it's, uh, it's on Wednesday, February 19th from 5 to 6. But that, um, for that, I want to take advantage of some of the technology that Zoom offers, and rather than all of you physically being in the same room, I would like everybody to connect with their own device. The library has devices available. If you don't have something that can connect to Zoom, um, there are free apps for phones and tablets that allow you to connect to Zoom. If you have trouble, we will hopefully discover that when you have to meet with me via Zoom in late January. Um, if you have un if things worked in January, but then your device isn't connecting to Zoom on February 19th for some reason, there will be a room you can go to so that you can still participate. Um, but the reason for having everybody connect separately 
is Zoom has some features where you can, where um, I can sort of put you in virtual rooms um, where you will be randomly put with four other people in a separate sort of sub-meeting to talk about something and then all kind of virtually pop in on those meetings. And then there'll be other times when we come back and have everybody talking together about something. Um, and that is a very powerful tool for allowing you all to conference with each other. Um, and it works. Since I'm not physically going to be in Doha, that's actually going to allow my presence to be more effective there. Because when I'm physically there in Doha, I can walk around to see what the groups are up to. But when I'm not physically in Doha, if I want to be checking in on you, it's, it's basically impossible to do if there's just one camera in a big conference room. Um, and you're t all sort of in small groups. Um, so um, this technology where you're each connecting separately, even though it seems a little weird if you're like just in next door rooms from each other, all connected separately, um, it has the advantage that um, you can be working in small groups, but I can join those small groups, which is not possible any other way when I'm not in Doha. Um, we will have the, our course assistant is their, uh, their, their job. Um, on Andrea's a jo job is that he is there to help make sure all of this works. And we'll all be working together on that. Um, but in addition to that, um, the, um, we will have a backup room for that one day. Um, most of all, I just wanted to reiterate um, that I really am excited to, I'm really excited about this material. Um, uh, I love working with students, talking with students about biology and about how biologists do the work that we do and about one of the really most exciting things about this class for me is that we will very quickly get to points where you will be asking questions that nobody has the answer to. Um, and so you're not going to leave this class knowing everything there is to know about addiction or about ADHD or OCD or, you know, or uh, obsessions with social media or anything like that. Um, but you will learn enough that you will be able to ask questions that nobody knows the answer to. And you will also learn about techniques that people are using to begin to, to, begin to answer those questions. Um, and even though we won't know like all of the details and maybe all of the like technical reasons why a particular technique can't quite yet answer a problem, um, you will have a sense of, in general, what is the kind of experiment somebody would need to do to answer this question that we all learn is so far unanswered. And I really find that a lot of fun to do. Um, and also, I'm certain that over the course of our time together, even though it's relatively condensed, you will also ask me questions that I don't know the answer to, but that somebody does. And that provides me with a new opportunity to expand my knowledge. Um, uh, you know, I've certainly had an opportunity to learn quite a lot about these topics, um, but there are some things that... Um, that we will probably touch on that um, uh, that I may not have had a chance to learn about. So it's a great learning experience for me. It's a great experience for us collectively to explore the limits of knowledge. And I hope it's a great experience for you to learn about biology, learn about neuroscience, and learn about 
how science really works. And I'm really excited to share all of these things with you um, over the course of the next, I guess, um, two months. So um, I look forward to the individual meetings with all of you um, in, uh, in about three weeks. And um, whatever questions come up, whether they're technical issues or other issues, with the or, or concerns about the assignments, questions about the material, um, questions about how to work grade scope, anything like that. Um, I'm available, and uh, and our course assistant will be available, especially to help out with the Zoom technology. So um, yeah, I, I look forward to meeting you all soon, and I will see you all in person in about a month.